What's up, everybody? Today on Bucket List Gear, we are having a look at the mighty Soldano Hot Rod 50 Plus. I still remember the day I bought this amp, a good friend of mine was selling it and when it came up, it was one of those pieces of gear where it was like, no matter what the price, I had to own it. The fact that it was in snake skin as well was a real sealer for me. Now, I remember bringing this amp home, plugging it in, I had all the controls set at noon except for the drive, which was at about two. And it was just one of those moments, you know, sometimes you play a piece of gear and you just can't help but have this like big, dumb, goofy smile. And I've got the amp set up the same way at the moment and it still gives me that feeling like this. <laughs> You know, it's just instant guitar face, and that's with the overdrive at two. As you wind it up, say, to about four, it just gets thicker and juicier, and, you know, everything I like about distorted rock guitar, you just get more and more of that. <laughs> And then, once you get it to about six, this is where the party really gets started. And that's just guitar and amp. I'm using a Marshall 412 with greenbacks mic'd with a 57 at the moment. So about as simple as you can get. Yeah, it's just got that thing about it. And this is without doing any EQ tweaking. So the way I used to run this when I gigged it live and the way I still kind of default to when I play it is I'll take the overdrive control to about five. Now with this one, I really like to bump the bass to about seven and I'll also give the mid range a push to about six. Remember that these amps go to 11. <laughs> So this is just like the thickest Marshall you've ever played in your life. At the moment, I've got the presence control at about three. I'll probably wind that up a little bit. You know, if you go really high with the presence control on this amp, it kind of does this. Which just adds a little bit too much fizz for my liking. It's a little bit more like a rectifier at those settings. Actually, if you like the rectifier thing, you know, we all know the dual rectifier preamp is a direct copy of the Soldano SLO. So I find that if you kind of turn the bass up, pull the mids out, turn the presence up on this guy and add a bit more treble, you really kind of get a recto -y tone out of it. It's great for those like, uh, you know, sus two chords in a drop tuning like I am at the moment. <laughs> For my liking, that is way over the top and I quite like the presence a little bit lower and I like the mids pushed on this particular amplifier. Now, it does have a normal channel, which if I switch over to that, this is with the normal drive at two. But I find if you get the normal control up to about, again, about six seems to be the magic spot.
you get this really kind of like bright ACDC style crunch out of it. And that is a very underrated feature on this particular amp. You know, if it was a single channel amp with only the normal channel, I think that would make a great alternative to something like a JCM 800 or a DSL. Lovely on the normal channel, but you know, the real part is on the overdrive channel. What I noticed when I used to play with this live as well is that in bigger rooms, I was able to push the overdrive master volume control and something kind of magical happens once you get it beyond five. I'll normalize the audio in these clips, but I'm gonna use these same settings with say the overdrive master volume at about three and then we'll hear it at six. So there you go, turning up the master volume control on this amp really is where the party's at, in my opinion. Now, some of you probably think this is heresy, putting a boost pedal in front of this amp, which a lot of people consider like the holy grail for amp overdrive, but I really like putting something like a Boss Super Overdrive in front of this just to kick it over the edge for leads. And this used to be the core of my old live rig. It was an SD1 in front of the Hot Rod 50 into a greenback cab. I'll play some rhythm guitar with the boost off and then with the boost on, and I'll do the same for some leads. As you can see, it's total guitar face city. So that is why I absolutely love this amp and why I would encourage anybody who has a chance to either play one in a store, play one at a mate's house or use on a recording session or live, jump at the chance. Soldano make absolutely incredible stuff. And I know recently, although Mike Soldano has retired from building the amps himself, that they have licensed out the design to the same people who make like the Friedman amps and the Morgan amps. And those things are really top notch stuff. So it's good to see that the Soldano designs are gonna live on for another generation of players because not only is this an amazing amp, it's incredibly well built. The noise floor is great and it's not one of those amps when you have like a lot of gain and it just sits there hissing. Like I've got a boost pedal on this and quite a lot of overdrive and there's almost no amp noise coming out of the speakers, which I always liked about this amp because especially when you turn up, you know, at a live gig, then that can just become a real problematic thing. But there you go, an absolute bucket list piece of gear in my opinion, the Soldano Hot Rod 50 Plus.